But we have, fortunately, theorists who have confidence. And what we have here is a theoretical prediction of what this landscape might be based on the properties that we've measured along the line, the line of nuclei that exists. So for example, nuclei are expected to come in many different shapes. One of them, for example, they can be football-shaped or banana-shaped or so on. And this is just a prediction based on a good nuclear model of what that shape might look at over this new landscape that we're going to be exploring with FRIB. And a lot of things I'm saying this morning I can say with more or less confidence. But the thing I can probably say with the most confidence of, a, of any other statement is that when we come out and measure these properties, and this contour here shows you the part of the landscape that FRIB will measure, and we have data to compare with those theories, first of all, it will be different from the, prediction that the, the theoretical prediction. And secondly, that the theorists will be as quick as a flash to adjust their models and their theories to explain what comes along. I see um, Professor Koonin, who is a well-known nuclear theorist, <laughs> nodding, nodding here. So this is really is the basic reason why a nuclear th physicist is excited, nuclear th is excited about FRIB. But there's another view of nuclear properties. This is the astrophysicist's view of the nuclear chart. Same chart, but now same black line of the stable nuclei along here, but now we've labeled different processes, the R process, the R preprocess, and so on. What this is about is the following. The stable nuclei, which we're able to study along the line, are basically the dinosaur bones of nuclear physics. Um, we look at, we go out, we dig up bones, and we figure out, well, this looks as though there's a skull, there's a leg, and so on. We, but what we know is that originally there were dinosaurs moving this thing around. It's the same thing with nuclear isotopes or rare isotopes. Right here on, on planet Earth, all we have are the, the isotopes along the line, but out there in the universe, there are situations which are very different. Situations where, for example, you have extremely neutron-rich environments, and the nuclei are really sitting out there. And we now do, can do experiments, and EFRA will provide us the properties that will um, let us explore these really um, ex exciting regions. So this is just a picture which shows a few of these environments. These, for example, neutron stars colliding, black holes, supernovae, and so on. This is exciting, exciting stuff. But how does it really relate to the um, nuclear physics? So here again, um, we take the nuclear chart. This is a movie that was made by Hendrik Schatz, a professor here and some of his students, and Annie Abrahamian and Brad Mayer, professors from recent ones. And this shows what might happen. We start a little more quickly than I expected. In such a condition where we start at the bottom, so let's try and play it again, actually, and then I can talk you through it when it gets to the end. OK, so here we go. So we're starting out down at the bottom here. Um, with a, a nucleus. We put it in an environment where there are lots of neutrons. It starts working its way up the nuclear chart. At some, the temperature of the system is starting to drop. And then at some point, the neutrons are taken away. And what happens then is the nuclei decay back to stability. But you'll notice an interesting fact here. This is now the intensity of the different nuclei. Is that when they end up back on the, on the line of stability, they actually have different intensities in different places due to the nuclear structure out here far away from stability. So basically, what we're going to be doing in the next decade or two decades is take the data that will come from FRIB, which tells us the properties of the nuclei out here, combine this with astrophysical measurements where they look at what's going on or model what would happen in the universe, what the neutron environment will be when two neutron stars environment so do the numerical simulation on the computer of what that would then produce for us here on Earth, and finally, match that with what we can, we can observe to, to um, get the answer of where the elements that we here, see here on Earth came from. <laughs>